Hello everybody. Today, I've decided to take you through a solo game of Talisman. Talisman has seen a number of different editions. The one we will be playing is from 1983, the second edition. There was a number of expansions for this Talisman edition. The one we'll be playing today will have all the expansions except the city expansion and this one has most of the dragon expansion. Now I took the nerdy factor a little higher with my edition here and I actually laminated all the cards for this game. It's very old and I wanted to preserve it. The expansions for this game came with additional adventure cards. So as you can see, there are a lot of adventure cards. Lots of different events, monsters, items that we can encounter. There are over 50 different characters you can actually choose from. I have chosen my character. It is the elf. And it's neat because actually one of the expansions also came with this really cool character sheet. But back to our elf here. So our alignment is good. Our start is in the forest. And here's our special abilities. One, you need not roll the die in the forest. You're always safe there. There's the forest it's referring to. You may evade enemies when on a wood space. There's a wood space. Instead of rolling a die for your move, you may move to any other wood space in the same region. So there's one wood space. And there's another wood space around here somewhere. I'm lost. Over here. Wood space. And then we have another one over here. So you can see here the elf strength is a three. And that is represented here by the token. Same with your craft. Craft of four. Mentioned here. Indicated with the token here. Four lives and one gold. We have our matching card here to represent our elf on the board, on a stand, and he starts in the forest. There is our forest space, and that's where he starts. So what is our goal? Well, the goal of Talisman is to reach the center, where the crown of command resides. And in order to get to the center, we need to adventure in the outer region, then there's the middle region and the center region. And in the center region, you go one step at a time. You don't roll for movement in here until you get to the Valley of Fire. And you must have a talisman at the Valley of Fire, which then you can move to the center space and win the game. Hence the name Talisman. Here's a talisman card, for example. Now you can find these all in the adventure deck. They're randomly in there as well, or there's ways to get a talisman card. The game is played with six siders. You roll a six sider for movement, and you also use six siders for combat and for rolling on various spaces as well. In the past, instead of using six siders for the combat, we would use eight siders, which would just give characters or enemies with lower stats more of a chance, more, make them a little more of a threat. Over here we have the token box. There's the ones, the twos, the threes, the fours, and the gold tokens. And here is the dungeon. Now there are various dungeon doorway cards that are throughout the adventure deck that would then give you access to enter the dungeon. Now in the dungeon, the dungeon's pretty tough. The monsters are quite more formidable and there's a few tricky spots on here. But if you do reach the center of the dungeon, there is what's called the treasure chamber, and you then roll a six-sider when you reach here, and if you roll a six, it will take you right to the crown of command. So let's begin. First roll for movement, a one. So we're current on the forest space. We can go to the fields, one, or the plains. Let's go to the plains, and Draw one card, an adventure card. All right, what do we find? 
An object, Dragon Skull. You may exchange the Dragon Skull for a talisman at the Warlock's Cave. And there's the Warlock's Cave. So if we reach, it, reach there, we then can discard this card and get ourselves a talisman. We just place that object right here. We roll for movement again. Next turn. One again. So we can go back to the forest or we can move onto the ruins. Let's go to the ruins where we draw two adventure cards. Adventure deck, a sword. Excellent, while you have a sword, you may add one to your strength for the duration of any combat in which you use it. The other adventure card, uh-oh, a dragon prince. Now, you will see at the top here, there are numbers. These numbers indicate which card you have to encounter first. So before we can actually have the sword, we have to deal with this card, which means we have to fight the Dragon Prince, who has a strength of nine. One of the Dragon King's younger brothers has made his home in this area. He will remain here until killed. Off to combat. Now the elf strength is a three, so we will roll the six-sider and add three. Four, five, six, seven. The Dragon Prince has a strength of nine, so he adds nine to this roll. Well, it doesn't matter. He only got a seven, which is not even his base strength, so. Yeah, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, yeah, the, the prince won. So I lost the combat, which means I then remove a life. Three lives remaining until the elf dies. Okay, and there the cards remain. So I could go back to that space and encounter that all over again if I wish. But now we have to land, for that to happen, we would have to land back on that space. So now it's back to movement, next round. Three, three. One, two, three, go to the fields. Or one, two, three, to the plains. Let's go to the plains and draw a card. An idol. You may pray here with the same results as at the temple. If you are enslaved, you remain on this space until you free yourself. Once the idol has been prayed to, it animates and strolls off to the discard pile. It says here that we can pray here with the same results as the temple. The temple is up here in the middle region. And for the temple, you roll two dice. So let's see what we get at the temple. Let's pray at the idol. Roll two dice. 12. It's usually higher the better in this game, so that's probably good. 12 is gain two lives. All right. Okay, two more lives. We're at five lives now. You can actually have unlimited amount of lives. And actually on that note, you can also gain strength and craft, and you can get unlimited amount of strength or craft as well. And of course, gold. All right, we were in the forest originally, and we've strolled on over to these ruins, came across a dragon prince, got our butt kicked, and then we ran away after he fried us and went to the idol. Prayed at the idol, got a couple of lives. Off the next round. And any cards that are used up, you just discard them. You just put them beside their corresponding deck. Okay. We high five the idol, got a couple of lives out of the deal. He took off. And now we go to the next round. Okay, a six. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. To the fields. One, two, three, four. Or to the fields again. We'll just go to this field square and draw one card. All right, really fun. Ooh, this is good. Two bags of gold. Exchange immediately for two bag of gold tokens and then place on discard pile. All right, a couple of gold tokens. So we just add that to our gold space. We now have three gold to use. So we can use gold to, there's doctors on the board, so it can help you heal up your lives. There are, there are also options to buy items, etc. get your money stolen by certain events. So the game is kind of referred to as the fantasy monopoly because it's a lot of just roll and move and follow the instructions on the space. Okay, here we go. A five. One, two, three, four, five. We can go to the sentinel space. So that means we can either fight the sentinel if we want to get up the stairs to the other region, or we can just draw an adventure card. It's our choice. Or one, two, three, four, five to the tavern. Let's go to the tavern. So at the tavern, we're instructed to, you must roll one die. Six, six. The boatman offers to ferry you to the temple as your next move. So we can go to the middle region. 
Let's do that. So, we are now at the temple for the next turn. And what do we do at the temple? You may pray. So we don't have to, we can just sit here and wait for the next round. But uh, that's no fun. So let's roll the two dice and see what happens. Four, lose one life or lose one follower. Well, we have no followers. So we just lose a life. We are now, we are now down to four lives. Next round. Six. So we can go to the Hidden Valley, where we draw three cards, or we can go to the Chasm. Roll one die for Chasm, yourself. A one or a two means you lose one life. Each follower you roll for, a one or two means that follower is killed. Place on discard pile. Let's go to the Hidden Valley and draw three cards. First card, an angel. Second card, a storm, and then an instructor. Okay, well, once again, the number's the top, one, one, and four. So we have to deal with these first two. So we have a storm sweeps through this region, either outer or middle. We are in the middle region. All players in it must miss one turn. The storm then, storm then abates, place it on the discard pile. Seeing how I'm only playing a one player game, it doesn't matter. The storm is really ineffective because, well, let's say, for example, if there was playing with someone else and they had a character down here, and I'm up here right now, the storm is in this region. So I would miss a turn and this player would get to go twice. We also met an angel here. You are visited by an angel of the gods. If you are of good alignment, you gain one life. If you are evil, you lose one life. There is no effect if you are neutral. The angel then departs, place it on the discard pile. We can see here that the elf's alignment is good. So we gain one life. So we're back up to our five lives. Now the instructor, he is a stranger. The instructor is happy to teach you for a price. For every three gold you give him, you miss a turn and gain either one craft or one strength. At the end of your instruction, he returns the discard pile. Well, let's do that. We can gain one strength by paying him three gold. So let's pay the three gold and get one strength. Now the elf strength is four. Instructor then goes to the discard pile. On to the next round. Four. We can go to the ruins. We draw one card. The thing about this space, though, uh, if you encounter any enemies there, they get plus two on their combat die roll. So that kind of sucks. And a four going the other direction would take us to the chasm. We don't want to go there. So to the ruins we go. All right, an ax, sweet. While you have an ax, you may add one to your strength for the duration of any combat in which you use it. You may also build a raft when you are in a woods or the forest. So to build a raft, it's that we can be on a wood space or a forest space. There's a few different wood spots. And there's also a wood spot also in the middle region here, right there. So if we're on that space and we have the ax, we then could build a raft, because you can see here, there is actually a river. It's supposed to be a river that goes around the entire region. So we have two objects, no followers. We have gained a strength. So we're, we have one strength higher than our base strength. When it comes to items, you can only carry four items at a time, but you can also during the game find um, mules, horse and cart, that sort of thing, which allows you to carry more objects. Next round. One. So we can go to the woods or to the castle. Now at the castle, we'll heal you back up to your starting quota at the cost of one gold per life while we're broke. If you are accompanied by the prince or princess, he will heal you free of charge. The prince or princess is a follower you can find throughout the game. Let's go to the woods. Draw a card. Book of Spells. You have found the fabled Book of Spells. You immediately gain your full complement of spells according to your current craft. The book then vanishes. Place this on the discard pile. Okay, let's put that in the discard pile. Now we have a craft of four, which entitles us to two spells. We can have as many as two spells. You need a craft of three, to get just one spell, and that's the most spells you can have. A craft of four to get maximum of two spells, and then a craft of six, I believe, 
six or five, I can't remember now. Six, I believe, to get three spells, and that's the most possible spells you can have at one time. So to the spells deck. Destruction and Metamorph. So Metamorph, you may cast this spell when you have just drawn Adventure Card. It allows you to discard any one Adventure Card that you have just drawn and draw another one instead. That can come in handy. Destruction. You may cast this spell at the start of your turn or when you have just completed your move. When cast, it empowers you to remove any upturned Adventure Card from the board and place it on the discard pile. If you're playing with other players, you can keep your spells hidden. So you can turn it over like that. But it's just us here. So we'll keep them face up. Now, because I'm the elf and we are on a wood space, if you look at our third special ability here, if you are on a wood space, instead of rolling a die for your move, you may move to any other wood space in the same region. Actually, taking a further look, there is no other wood space in this region. So we actually can't teleport to a different wood space. So that was useless. So let's just go ahead and roll for movement. Four, so four, one, two, three, four. We can go to the desert, lose one life, and that sucks. Or one, two, three, four, to the Black Knight. Uh-oh, you must either give up one gold, discarding to the, to the stock, or else lose one life. Well, it looks like we're losing a life. So let's just go to the Black Knight and lose a life. So unfortunately, we had no gold that we could pay the Black Knight. So we have to lose a life. We have four lives now. All right, next turn. Five. So we, so we can go to one, two, three, four, to the temple, or one, two, three, four, five, to the chasm, or we can actually go down the stairs. You can go down without any trouble with a sentinel. One, two, three, four, or four, five, to the chapel, or one, two, three, four, to the graveyard. Now, you lose a life if you're good at the graveyard, though, automatically. So let's go down and go to the chapel. So what is our option at the chapel? Well, good. You may either be healed free of charge back up to your starting quota, or you may pray by rolling one die. Well, we have four lives. That is the starting quota. So let's roll one die. Five, which is gain one life. Okay, back up to five lives again. Next round. Five. We can go to the fields, draw a card, or two, the fields. Fields it is. Draw one card. Draw one card. Uh-oh. Cave troll. They have a cave troll. This creature attacks immediately. Fight combat as normal. Except that if the cave troll is defeated, roll one die. If a six is rolled, the foul thing regenerates and stays on the space. It will remain here until killed. The troll character need not fight the cave troll. Well, we're an elf. We are not the troll character. So combat begins. So my elf has a four plus the axe, which gives one to strength, a five strength. Okay. So five. So we rolled a nine. The cave troll gets plus six to this. Seven. We defeated the cave troll. But now because of our special instructions here, we have to roll the one die and see if the cave troll regenerates. So roll one die, six is rolled, here we are. No, it does not regenerate. So what that means is when you defeat a creature in combat, an enemy, you take them as a trophy. So when you get a total of seven in either strength or craft, you then can discard them to the discard pile and gain one in that stat. So right now we have a cave troll with, that's, that's worth six strength. So if we defeat another creature that's worth one, two, three, whatever, but at least one more strength, trade them in and we get ourselves an extra strength. And then therefore we'd be up to five base strength. Okay, next round. A, a three. To the hills or to the crags? If we go to the crags, we roll one die. If we roll a one, okay, well, let's just go draw a card. So to the hills, draw one card. Ooh. A dungeon doorway. Sweet. So the dungeon doorway is then placed on that space and it remains there for the rest of the game. Should we enter it? Yeah, let's enter the dungeon. Okay, and movement works the same way as it does on the other map. We just roll a six-sider for movement. Next round. One. So we move to one. 
draw one card. Now, because we are in the dungeon, we don't draw from the adventure deck. We draw from the dungeon deck. Oh, okay. A lone dwarf. So what happens here? If you choose to approach the dwarf, roll a die to see how he reacts. All right, let's roll. Let's approach him. Six. Oh, joins you as a follower. While he is your follower, you may add one to your roll at the treasure chamber. Nice. So we've now added the lone dwarf to our list of followers. You can have as many followers as you possibly can find. There's no limit to the number of followers. Okay, we've entered the dungeon. We went into a corridor where we came across a lone dwarf who now has joined us. Next round. Three. One, three. Guard room. The guard has strength five. If you bribe him with two gold, he will let you pass. Otherwise, you must fight him. We have zero gold, so we must fight the guard. Now the strength here is four plus one because of the axe. Strength is five. Seven. Now the guard rolls five plus seven. It's a draw. So nobody wins, nobody loses. And I can proceed through the dungeon. Next round. Five. Tunnel. Draw one card. To the dungeon deck. Snake pit. To cross the snake pit safely, you must roll a number less than your strength on one die. If you fail, you must lose a life or a follower. Okay, now, on one die, on a six-sider, I need to roll under a four. Because the axe doesn't come into play here. That's only for combat. So I have to roll one, two, or three. 50-50 chance. Ooh, lose a life or a follower. I have to lose a life. I want to hold on to my lone dwarf because he'll help me later on. So I will lose the life. I'm down to four. And the snake pit actually stays at this location. If some terrible incident occurs where I end up back there again. Now, if this was combat and I lost to combat to some creature, you then have to actually spend a round moving backwards through the dungeon. You can't proceed forward. So, but that was not combat, so I can still move further into the dungeon. Six. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. The torture chamber. You must pay the torturer one gold or lose one point of either strength or craft. All right, now my starting quota for craft is four, so I can't lose a point in craft. You can't go below your starting quota. My strength, though, I did gain a strength because so, my starting quota is three, so I will have to lose the strength. I've gotten a little weaker. Back down to three. Okay, press on. Next round, to the dungeon. Three, chamber of darkness. On your next move, instead of moving normally, roll one die. Okay. So we are here, six spaces from the center. Let's press on. We're doing okay right now. Now let's see where this chamber of darkness takes us. Six. Three spaces forward. Excellent. One, two, three. The kitchen. You may roll one die. Okay, what are some of our results here? Poison, lose one life, taste great, heal one life. You know what? I'm going to... I'm going to roll. Actually, I'm not going to roll because I'm able to heal, it says on the text, if I rolled high. But I already have four lives. You, I can gain more lives when the text specifically says gain. But I can only heal here and you can't heal past four. So no point. Let's just move forward. So we will ignore the kitchen and press on. Three. Just enough. One, two, three. We may now roll in the treasure chamber. Okay. Treasure chamber. Let's get a six. Ah, uh, five. Uh, wait. Lone dwarf. <laughs> oh, wait. It's because the lone dwarf here, while he is your follower, may add one to your roll at the treasure chamber. So, five plus one. Crown of Command. The Elf will rule the lands. We won. That's Talisman. That was a, a fairly quick game, considering. Talisman is one of those games, though, you can really drag on and on. If you have um, 
you're playing with yourself or depending on how many players you have, you can really take your time with getting to the middle. Um, you do need a fairly high strength and craft, usually, to take on this area before you get to the Crown of Command. But we were lucky, and through the dungeon, we made it all the way to the treasure chamber and managed to roll a five, and thanks to our buddy here, the Lone Dwarf, he added plus one. So thank goodness I didn't forget about that. Anyway, fun game. This game was a big favorite when I was a kid. Uh, it's still a great introduction for a lot of people into the fantasy genre, I think, just to give them a feel for a simpler form, but not really rated high amongst a lot of gamers when it comes to a lot of decision-making or strategy. Very simplified. Hence the whole fantasy monopoly idea. So, but uh, a lot of fun nonetheless. We barely touched the adventure stack. Still lots and lots of different encounters that we could have faced. I actually have these here as well. I did not use them this game, but what you can do is it's a number of different alternative endings. So what you do is you shuffle these, pick one out at random and place it in the middle. And then when a character reaches the middle, you then flip it over and have to encounter whatever it is. So in this case, Belt of Hercules. But there's a few different ones. There's actually even one where you, which is actually is good for a few chuckles, as long as it's not your character. It's the horrible black void, which just kills your character. So you reach the end, you flip that over and you slip into the black abyss of nothingness and you lose. But Talisman, still a fun game. A great little simple social game, I like to call it. And I hope you enjoyed this video and gave you a good idea of what it's like to play Talisman. So thank you for watching, everybody. Bye-bye for now.